If you want better for the black community, you got to be serious about supporting black businesses. What's going on, guys? It's Josiah, your success strategist, and today is all about Black Friday. So I'm running a new segment on my channel. Be sure to subscribe if you're not already subscribed to this channel. Black Fridays is always about the most pressing issues that black people need to be talking about in order to make our communities change. So for today's episode, I'm going to give you the top three reasons why it is extremely important, absolutely critical to support black owned businesses. So a lot of you guys are familiar with the recent Starbucks controversy and everybody knows Starbucks largest uh, coffee business in the world has locations internationally. And a lot of us went and supported that business just about every day. Some people are coffee fanatics. And then we saw that video uh, about a couple brothers getting arrested up in Pennsylvania. And we all kind of stood back and were reminded of the fact that even though we tend to give many businesses our hard earned money, a lot of times those businesses don't always have our best interests at heart. Many corporations in the world today uh, are being run and cash flowed on the backs of your dollars, but you're not seeing anything in exchange. And so this is the reason why supporting black businesses are so important because the fact of the matter is where you spend your dollar has a lot to do with who's going to ultimately benefit from it. And even though you may be going to certain restaurants, certain schools, certain uh, retail stores and spending money around the clock for basic necessities that are needed for your life, there's ultimately so much more that we could do collectively if we were really serious about supporting our own people, okay? No disrespect to what anyone else has going on, but we've got to now look out for ourselves because if we do not support ourselves and support each other, nobody else will do this for us, okay? So let's get into the top three things. Number one, the first reason why it is extremely important to support Black-owned businesses is due to the fact that we are giving massive funding to the economy without representation. I'm gonna say that again. Funding without representation. Right now, black Americans, we spend more than $1.1 trillion in America per year. $1.1 trillion. Now the question is, what are we getting out of it? Where are we going? How is that $1.1 trillion gross domestic spending actually improving our communities? Are we working to help each other get out of certain neighborhoods? Are we working to be able to improve our education? Are we working to improve our health? How is our gross domestic product, which by the way, as a whole, black Americans, uh, when you take the $1.1 trillion that we spend per year, in terms of countries, that would make us one of the top 10 countries in the world just with our gross spending. So the question is, how is our money working for us as a whole? How is our money helping to benefit us as a people. Oftentimes, we are spending money that we work from sunup to sundown, working hard to get, and we have no mental uh, framework on how far these dollars could actually go for us because we're already so used to living in a society where we have funding without representation, okay? So I'm gonna write this down real quick. Hopefully you guys are taking notes. And make sure that you share this um, with one of your friends. Now, some of you guys may be uh, business owners. And you might be watching this video and saying, yeah, man, my people need to hear this. 
And then some of you guys, you may be aspiring business owners. Some of you guys have no uh, interest in being an entrepreneur at all. And that's okay because uh, I believe that not everyone in society is an entrepreneur. Um, and that's perfectly fine. But you've got to be able to see how the collective nation building stems largely from how we will be able to support one another within a communal framework, okay? So tax funding without representation. If you don't have any representation coming from your dollars, which right now is 1.1 trillion, we're projected to spend $1.5 trillion per year as of 2021, okay? This is our buying power as black Americans. I really want you to be able to understand what type of world could change on the strength of our $1.5 trillion spending power, okay? I want you to think right now about what would happen if we stopped spending so much money as a people. I'm not talking about boycotting. I'm not talking about doing sit-ins. I'm, I'm not having that type of conversation. I just want you to think about the sheer mathematics of things right now. How would the American economy change and crumble if black Americans alone, out of all of the different nationalities in society today, just did not spend any money? Now, the reason why I'm posing this hypothetical question is because I'm trying to get you to imagine the level of impact that we have once we begin to become cognizant of our buying power. There are a lot of us that grow up in these different locations and, and you come from a very kind of individual point of view where you only see life under your lens in terms of the money that you're making or the family that you have. But as a whole, there's so much more that we could benefit one another if we actually thought about how we spend our money collectively as a nation of people, okay? So many billion dollar organizations have been established on the backs and blood of the back dollar, okay? So this kind of segues me into the second point, right? Because the first point about funding with, without representation, if you wanna be able to get maximum representation in your communities, I would think that one of the best chances that you have at being able to do that is by actually putting funding towards black businesses that have a vested interest into your success, right? Look at what's happening with Starbucks right now. They are having to come out with an entire training series on racial sensitivity. And that is showing you that there are people that are owners of corporations, people that are employees at corporations that are taking your dollar every single day, even though they care nothing about you. So now what you've got to do is you got to look at that and say, okay, well, what is it that I'm going to do personally to make sure that I get people in position and in place to really represent my needs as a black person in America? I mean, that's really one of the true core essence of business, right? Customer service, customer advocacy, customer care. You know, we're so accustomed to just being consumers of commodities that we truly don't understand that these same organizations that we are making rich, they have a, they have a corporate social responsibility to be able to have a certain level of consideration for us because of how much money we are giving to them. If we stop giving those businesses money, they in turn do not have a business. But because of the fact that we really don't think like this as a whole, nothing changes. And everybody else knows that, okay? So what we've got to do is we need to start thinking on the basis of how can businesses actually create change in my community? Well, one of the things that businesses can do is provide jobs. One of the things that businesses uh, can do is provide better education programs. 
one of the things that businesses could do is take you out of the conditions that you're living in now and put you in better ones, whether that comes to housing, whether that comes to your location, whether that comes to even where you're working right now at your nine to five job. I cannot tell you the difference between working at an established corporation that was controlled by other nationalities versus working for myself and the joy that comes from being able to help my people become as successful as possible. Again, this is no knock on anybody else, but everybody, um, many other communities, they're already aware of this. This is already a tenant that they live by in their communities and they practice these values every single day. So if you go into an Asian community, it's already self-evident what a business will do in terms of being able to improve their conditions within their community, right? If you go into uh, a Caucasian community, it's already self-evident what business, um, the benefits of funding with representation, how that will benefit their community. It's already apparent when they're going and working for people that look like them, right? We're one of the only communities in this earth that by the majority works for other communities of people outside of ourselves. So again, in the investment of time, in the investment of money, in the investment of energy, some of our most precious resources that we have on this earth, we are literally giving all of that away to other communities and we are seeing very little in return and we're lacking the proper representation, okay? So in other words, the question is this. If you find yourself being discriminated at Starbucks or any other company, at what point would we as a people see the benefit of supporting a black Starbucks, right? Where you don't have to go into a business and pay your last dollar and worry about, is somebody going to call the cops? Is someone going to feel threatened? Is someone just taking my dollar without having any vested interest in my livelihood as a person? This is our life in America when we are funding other corporations and we get no representation as a return. I know some black folks that buy Starbucks every single day, but they don't own 1% of a stock, one half of 1%, one twelfth of a, of a percent of the stock in Starbucks. So again, all of this is being done from a consumer's mentality but if you wanna be able to nation build and help develop the state of your own people, you have to be able to look at it from an investor's mentality. You've gotta be willing to invest in your own community. And that's the reason why it's so important that you fund black owned businesses. Let me get into the second point, okay? The second point is about recycling black dollars. Again, very, very important. Why is recycling black dollars so important because when you look at um, many other, again, communities, their support systems are so strong because of the economic power that they are wielding by keeping the dollars within their households, okay? So I'll give you an example. When you look at the Asian community, right? The Asian community recycles every dollar that comes into their community it stays there for one month's time, okay? I want you to think about that. In Jewish communities, their dollar stays there for 20 days, meaning for every dollar that they spend, it's going into one of their neighbor's pocket. It's that dollar that's going into one of their neighbor's pocket will then come back to them because if they have a bar mitzvah, if they have other gatherings socially, if someone within that community is struggling and they are disadvantaged, they will help one another to succeed because that exact same dollar that they were given was at one point in time 
uh, supported and donated for by the person that's in the time of need now. In other words, everyone looks out for each other. And to some extent, we have been unfortunately conditioned in this society to be out for self. But success as a whole is a team sport. When you look at any thriving community of people on the planet, uh, they are working together in a very collective system. And this is something that we must do, which is the reason why there is such a grave importance for supporting a black owned business. Even if it's just one business a week, you've got to be able to start somewhere. Because when you're looking at all of these other communities and you ask yourself, you know, well, why are they thriving? Is it just on the basis of hard work? Is it just on the basis of intellect? Is it just on the basis of racism and discrimination? Or does it also have something to do with the fact that they are operating off of a communal system that allows each other to be financially supported so that way everyone wins. That way everybody wins. Success, again, is a team sport, okay? So again, you take a look at um, the hair industry, right? This is a billion dollar industry. And there are so many um, sisters within the black community that have extremely beautiful hair deep knowledge on, um, you know, hair textures, how to be able to change your hairstyles, genetics, natural hair products, right? All of these different uh, beauty treatments. And yet there's so much money that is being deployed from the black community into other communities to be able to support these hair care products that we buy on a daily basis. How would things change in the black community if we had our own black hair businesses, right? Would our children be able to go to college and have full funding and support if for the same five to 10 to $15 that was being spent at other beauty salons or beauty shops or, you know, online products now, how differently would things look if we were able to recycle even a fraction of these dollars within our own community? Now, when I'm saying everything that I'm telling you guys, I'm speaking from personal experience. I'm not just somebody that's just soapboxing and ranting about something theoretical. I have actually been working for a number of years within my business where I have been empowering others within my community and they have seen the residual effects of that by their own professional development and growth. I've helped people get uh, real estate properties that they may not have ever otherwise gotten due to uh, certain credit uh, damages and things of that nature helping people to get positions, um, whether it be internally or externally at other companies, making a lot more money to show them how to get paid what they're worth. When we work together as a collective nation of people, that's when we can start to see real change. We find ourselves protesting about so many things in this life. We find ourselves protesting against the NFL when there are certain um, barriers that we are facing in terms of ownership in the National Football League. We find ourselves uh, protesting against this Starbucks situation, right? And every year it's something different. Every year it's a different establishment. It's a different police system. It's a different tragedy. It's a different shooting. And really at the root of every issue, we are always the renters and never the owners. We are always the workers and not the controllers or the CEO. And when we find ourselves in such limited positions where we don't actually have ownership or collective influence that we're wielding to change anything within the society, all we must settle to do is to accept the crumbs that are being given to us. 
This is the reason why recycling black dollars are so important. Again, the statement is this. There's $1.1 trillion that is floating around in the black community today. So where are our black millionaires, billionaires, etc.? Yes, there are a select few of those people that are in position, no doubt. We're, all of us are not in poverty. <laughs> that's one thing that black folks need to know. Not everybody that's black is broke and struggling. But the point that I'm trying to make is how much better could we be as a community if we had our own businesses that we were not discriminated uh, against, if we patronized businesses that actually uh, gave back to our communities rather than just take from our communities, how much would the society as a whole shift by our collective efforts? The black dollar in the black community only stays there for six hours. So while you have other communities that are that the money is being circulated from person to person within a neighborhood in one month's time, when it comes to our dollar, that dollar is only staying within our neighborhood within six hours before it goes out to other communities and we get no representation. We get very little representation for all that we are producing and putting in the world. When you think about some of the top inventions that have been known in the world today, it has been authored by the black community. But we do not see the residual effects of these things by and large. And it's largely because of the fact that we have become so accustomed to stepping outside of our community to look for the solutions rather than build inwardly. So my question and my statement is simply this, how much better would your life be if you did not have to worry about being discriminated against at every turn because of the fact that you are trying to empower your own community rather than only being in a very limited one dimensional system where the only grocery store that you could go to is if it's controlled by another community. The only uh, athletic leads that you can participate in is if it is in another community. The only coffee shops that you go to is if it's in another community. So however they set the pace on things, ultimately that's something that we will have to comply with to some extent. And there's so much more that we could accomplish if we only valued our collective buying power as a community and put it together into an insurmountable force to create change in our communities. We cannot go to any other organizations that are not run by our people to improve our conditions. This is just simply a fact. You can try to go to all of these other groups and you can beg for the acceptance and the validations of all of these other communities to get them to do certain things for you. But ultimately, the sheer human fact is no one is going to care about you more than you. No one is going to do more for your betterment with a vested interest than somebody that looks like you. And this is the posture that we need to get in just for our own spirit of self-preservation in 2018. Many of you guys are seeing everything that's still happening in the world today. You see our current president in office. Somebody had to vote him in. Somebody got to be uh, controlling all of these regulations on how we get shot in the streets. And so you've got to be able to look at that and you've got to be able to start trying to create change to do for self. Okay. Here's the third and final point that I want you guys to get. And videos like this are the reasons why I even created the channel of Black Men's Career. There's a million other different things that I could have been doing, but I wanted to be able to do something strong that could help us as a community, which is why I give out so much of my content all for free. The things that I could have previously charged you for, I keep giving it out for free because my hope and my passion and my prayer and my wishes that someone out here on these free platforms will begin to see these things and will be inspired to provoke 
positive change, okay? Third and final point. You got to stop making excuses, okay? If you're serious about creating change within the black community, the sheer fact is you got to stop making excuses. You know, there's been a lot of people that have said over the years, oh, well, you know, the reason why I don't support a black business is because they don't know how to act. Or the reason why I don't support a black business is because look at how low quality the standards are, right? But any of us that grew up in certain neighborhoods know good and damn well that we would go to some of the grimiest places to be able to get our Chinese food, to be able to get our liquor, to be able to go to all different types of hotels and establishments, where things were not always on point like that, but we did it anyway because we came from the consumer's position. Remember what God said, the first commandment that was given to man on earth, be fruitful and multiply. In other words, what God is trying to tell us to do is to think with a producer's mentality, multiply all of the resources that we have to be able to replenish the earth. And when we are so busy consuming rather than producing or actually spending our money with people that can help us benefit and grow and get a return on our investment, when we're so busy to let a dollar outside of the community so freely with zero expectations of any representation to come from that, we find ourselves at a tremendous loss. It is not by chance that other communities know this and have applied this in their lives. And it is no um, guess as to why they have accomplished a certain level of socioeconomic success, okay? This is just one of the ways in which the black community can be improved. It's not just through economics. But in this particular video, what I want you to think about is if you're serious about improving the black community, you've got to be the change that you want to see. So if you don't like the quality uh, of what you're getting out of black businesses, this is where you got to take the onus and actually be a black business owner yourself or support and encourage those that do live up to quality standards support their businesses so that way they can continue to educate and set the standard for other black businesses to follow. This is our only option. Again, no one else is going to do this for us. You're not going to go anywhere else and somebody's going to just have this billion dollar vested interest in wanting to see black people thrive in America, okay? There's far too many of us that have you know gone to school we've graduated from college and taken the best and the brightest of our community and never once gave them a true uh business education that hey i want you to think about life from an owner's point of view your education is all good there's nothing wrong with working at a nine to five job but in order for us to be able to have a strong legacy, we have to have something that we can call our own. We have to have a sense of ownership. And the only way that we can do that is if we stop making excuses and we start getting serious about making deliberate sacrifices to improve our condition within this world. This is what other communities of people have done. They have not always had uh, the best living conditions. And there's even communities now that will probably tell you that they don't feel like they're living perfect. But when you look at their, their nation as a whole, they have followed these principles and they have gotten a certain level of success. Okay. So this is the video about the importance of su supporting black owned businesses. For those of you uh, that have been supporters of black men's career, I thank you deep down from the bottom of my heart. Your support means the world to me. This is the reason why I make many of these videos for you free of charge. If you know other black people 
that want to be able to take that step forward to really being able to empower our community and make things happen in society, not just talk about it, but actually live it, please share this video with them. Please have them subscribe to this channel. There's only so much that I can do on my own by myself. So make sure that you subscribe, leave me a comment, let me know what you thought about today's video, and I'll see you guys on the next episode, okay? It's up to us to be able to take that next step forward. Nobody is going to do for us better than we can do for ourselves. Take care.